Hi there everybody. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a new battery from Bonker Power. It's in their U2 Ultralight series, and it's a 1380 milliamp hour 6S pack with a massive 180C continuous discharge rating and 360C burst rating. Um, I've never seen that high rating on a battery, so I'm pretty excited to see how it's gonna perform. Needless to say, this thing should be absolutely bonkers. Let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. This is the pack we're gonna be testing today and Bonker do a few different versions of this 1380 milliamp hour 6S. They do a 150C version and they do a 180C version. We're gonna be testing the 180C version today as the higher rated pack. And let's stick it on the scale and get a weight. This pack comes in at just about exactly 235 grams, which is pretty light considering it's got nearly a 1400 milliamp hour capacity. Before we dive into the test data, I want to let you know that I've just finished uploading my entire Betaflight 4.5 tuning guide onto my Patreon. It covers tuning filters, PIDs and rates and goes into detail on every setting, including the new ones in Betaflight 4.5 so that you can get any quad tuned to perfection. If you're interested, there's a link down in the video description. Now that we've seen the pack on the bench, let's take a look at its test results and see how it compares to the other 6S packs that I've tested. Let's start by looking at battery capacity. And I measure capacity using a 15C discharge test. This means that I discharge the pack from absolutely full to empty over about four minutes, which is very typical for an FPV flight. And I'm looking at the amount of charge in amp hours that the battery can deliver during that discharge test. And normally we don't expect lithium ion batteries to deliver their full rated capacity during a fast discharge at 15C. Normally batteries are rated using a slow discharge at 1C or 0.1C and when you discharge them much faster than that, the battery voltage sags a bit more and so we don't get quite as much charge out of them. That said, the Bonker U2 is doing really well in this test. It's delivering very close to its 1380 milliamp hours of rated capacity. It's delivering more capacity than the Dogcom MCK 1380, and it's trading blows with the Onbo and Ovonic 1400 milliamp hour packs that should be slightly bigger. So it's doing really well in this capacity test. Capacity is not the be all and end all when we're thinking about energy storage because it doesn't take into account the voltage of the pack during discharge and it doesn't take into account the weight of the pack. To look at both of those things, I have this metric called energy density. Here we look at the amount of energy the pack delivered in watt hours and divide it by the weight of the pack to get an idea for how much energy the pack is storing per gram of weight. What we can see is that the Bonker U2 does reasonably well in this metric. It comes somewhere in the middle of the pack. It's not quite as good as some of the GNB high volts and the uh, Ovonic and Onbo 1400 milliamp hour packs, but it's also doing better than some of the packs from CNHL and the non high volt GNBs. So it's perfectly, it's doing it having a perfectly respectable result here. And to be honest, energy density is not the like raison d'etre of this pack. That's going to come when we look at its power performance. One way to measure the power performance of a battery is to look at its C rating. And C rating is a measure of the maximum current that the battery can supply under certain conditions as a ratio to its capacity. So if we have a one amp hour battery that can supply 10 amps, it gets a C rating of 10. I measure the C rating by discharging the pack at 15 C until it's 80% full, and then discharging it down to 3.3 volts per cell using a burst test, and that gives us a measure of the amount of current that the battery can supply when it's 80% full and the voltage has sagged to 3.3 volts per cell. The Bonker U2 starts to pull ahead of the other batteries in this test. We can really see that it delivers a massive amount of current under these conditions. It gets very close to a real C rating of 80C. It comes in about 78C. And that's much better than any of the batteries that I've tested before. It's better than the Tattoo R-Line, the FPV and the Ovonic packs by quite some margin. To put this result on another scale, here's the amount of power that each of the packs was able to deliver during the burst test. We can see that the Bonka U2 1380 delivered 2130 watts at 80% full during that 3.3 volts per cell burst test. And that is significantly higher. It's like 500 watts more than the Ovonic 1400 or the uh, Dogcom MCK 1380. It's a really impressive result and it puts it quite, quite far ahead of the other batteries that I've tested in terms of its ability to deliver burst power. For the fairest comparison, we have to take the weight of the pack into account when looking at the power delivery. 
Here's the power density chart, which shows the power that the battery is able to deliver in watts divided by the weight of the battery in grams. And that gives us a fair comparison across packs of different sizes. We can see that the Bonker U2 1380 is coming out on the top of this chart, and it's the first pack I've tested to deliver more than nine watts per gram in this power density metric. The batteries close to it with eight and seven and a half watts per gram respectively are the Tattoo R-Line and the VFPV, but these are both smaller packs. If you compare the Bonker U2 1380 to other 1400 and 1380 milliamp power packs, it delivers about 30% more power per gram of battery weight compared to those other packs, which is, I think, a really significant uplift. The final chart I want to show you is looking at voltage sag, and this is measuring the voltage of the pack during the 15C discharge test. What we're looking for is a pack that can maintain the highest possible voltage during discharge, because the higher the voltage of the pack during discharge, the more efficient your motors are going to be, and the higher the RPM you're going to be able to achieve at the prop, and so the more performance the pack is going to give you. What we can see is that the high volt packs from GMB start off with the highest discharge voltage, but then during the second half of the discharge curve, they fall away, and they actually have much lower voltage during the latter half of the discharge than the non-high volt packs. The Bonker U2 is doing really, really well in this test. It's got the highest voltage during discharge for pretty much the whole second half of the discharge curve, and that shows that the chemistry that they're using in this battery is really good. The better the chemistry, the higher the voltage the pack is going to be able to maintain during discharge, and the better performance you're going to get from it. Having looked at these test results, it's pretty clear to see who this battery is aimed at. If you're an FPV racing pilot, or someone who just wants to go really, really, really ridiculously fast with a 5-inch quad, then this is the battery for you. And if you pair it with a super powerful high KV motor like the AOS Supernova, it's going to get you from point A to point B faster than anything else. If that's what you want, then there are links down in the video description to where you can find this battery today. While you're looking through the video description, why not check out my Patreon? I've just finished uploading my entire Betaflight 4.5 tuning guide on there in PDF format. It covers filters, PIDs, and rates, and is the perfect reference to get any quad tuned to perfection with Betaflight 4.5. That's all I have for you for today, so until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.